further directions on how to draw a human face, and they go along with the video of how to sculpt a human face. I'm going to draw a line straight up and down on the page, down the middle of the page, and then I'm going to do the same thing this way. If you want to know if it's in the middle, you can measure and raise your hands and measure and make sure you've got it in the middle. You really don't need to use a ruler. You can just draw it fairly straight. You kind of check it with your pencil. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You do not want it really dark. This is dark enough. You're going to be erasing it later. Okay, we are going to use your middle knuckle. So here's the end one. There's that one, and there's that one. We're using that. So if you bend your finger back like this, what we're going to do is use that to measure. So I'm starting in the center, and I'm moving one, two knuckles away, and putting a little line. Doing the same over here, starting in the center, one, two knuckles away, little line. Vertically, I'm going to do three knuckles, one, two, three. Notice I'm using that finger on my other hand to mark. If I just go one, two, three, I'll probably get it off. Okay, this way, one, two, three. Okay. Now what we have to do is create an oval or kind of an egg shape, something like this, for the human face. So I like to start kind of a straight line up here and one down here. Taller straight line here, taller here. And now I'm going to connect in a curve. Notice I am rotating my hand to get a curve. I don't want a square don't want something like that. This comes in a little bit more gently. See this goes straight up straighter and then curves and this starts to come in a little earlier. So then the easiest thing to do is take your paper and turn it upside down. I can't do that because I've taped the paper down so it doesn't move for the camera. But basically what I want to do is get that angle where it's comfortable to use my pencil to swing right here. So here, I'm on the outside, and that's much harder to do to get it right. So if you can, turn your paper upside down, swing your hand like this. Like I said, I can't really do it because my paper is taped down, but that's about as close as I'm going to get. Trying to make this one even, about like that. Now. I'm going to figure out where the eyes, nose, and mouth are. So what you can do is take your fingers and put it on the top of your head and then bring your thumb down to your eye and then measure the bottom half of your face. And what you'll find is top of your head all the way to your eye and then your eye down to your chin. This is going to be where your eyes are going to be on this line right in the middle of your head. Now I'm going to have you divide up the bottom half of the face in half. I'm off a little bit, so I'm going to try it again. Move that thumb down a little further. Right about there. There's the middle. And now I'm going to divide that bottom in half. So all I had was a half here, and then the lower half divided in half, and then the remaining lower half divided in half. So this line right here is where the nose is going to be. And this is the bottom of the lips. And then we still have some left for the chin. If you want to do a more masculine face versus this little more feminine one here, differences in the jawline. That's one of the differences. Notice that this comes wider than the female. This is more angular up here. Here, The cheekbones are more angular. And then when you do your shading, you can shade in here. Also, this little crease right here might be more angular, and there might be a little divot under the chin there. We're going to figure out how big the eyes are from side to side. This, for some reason, is very difficult for students, but try to follow the directions I'm going to give you. This is the easiest way I have figured out to do it. So you're going to take a piece of paper, and you're just going to fold it so it's the length or the width of your face, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and tear this off, or you can cut it with scissors if you want. So we've got the right length there. 
Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide it up so that you have even spaces for the eyes. I'll show you how that works out. So if I go ahead and I measure the width of an eye from here to here, if you take a look, that's the same measurement between the eyes. And then of course this eye is the same size. Then you have that same measurement or that same fraction to the side of the head. And the same one over on that side because we're even. So that is one, two, three, four, five eyes wide. So what we have to do is take this piece of paper and fold it so it is five even sections across. So if you're dividing something into fifths, you do not start by folding it in half. That would divide it into fourths or maybe sixths. So instead, what you're just going to do is you're going to fold, not fold, roll the paper back. See how I'm not crushing the edges? Until I have one, two, three, four, five sheets of paper here. So now what I have to do is I have to adjust until all those edges are going to be even. Notice that these first three are even, but that one's too short. So I have to go back and make each of these a little bit shorter. Try this. I went too short. A little longer. Have patience. You can do this. Notice I am not creasing the edges. I'm keeping them rounded so that I can still play around with them. A little longer. Not quite there. Okay, if you look at this end, I've got it. Okay, they're pretty even, so now I'm going to go ahead and crease the edges. So I have one, two, three, four, five even sections. Take that in my drawing. Actually, it was this side I was using. Got it shorter. Notice there are no folds in the middle. So I go ahead and I put a line right here, here. This right here is the width of my nose and right here. Now I can come inside that and draw a little line here and here that is going to represent the width of the bridge of the nose. So that's right in here. And then I can take it and I can bring it up, curve it out. This is where the eyebrows are going to go. Don't draw the whole nose in yet. We'll come to that later. Now I need to go ahead and draw the eyes. I'm looking for something like that. Okay. I'm going to erase that so all I have is a little dot right here. So I no longer have this line coming up. I've had people like this messes them up. What you're going to do is you're going to angle out from that little dot, arch it up, and then come out to here. And you can come just slightly beyond that line there. Like that. And then try to do the left one the same, which is difficult. I erased that little line, made it a dot. Arch up. See if you can get it the same height up. You might even want to draw a line there. Come out just a little further than there. Okay. Now, when I draw the bottom, if you see here, close up, you have a tear duct down there. So here's the arched line that I drew up here. Here it's going to go over, and then it's going to drop down and arch up. So there's a point here, and there's a point over here, but this is almost a straight line going across. So. Starting at that dot, coming down a little bit and going over. Point over here, curving up to over here. And that gives you that little tear duct. Down, over. Again, might want to draw a line there so you get in the same depth. Close enough. Now that I have basically the outline of the eye, I'm going to need to do the top eyelid, a little bit for the bottom eyelid, and the pupil. I'm going to pupil, sorry, and iris. 
I'm going to do the pupil and the iris first and draw them lightly. And then as I bring the eyelid over it, I will be able to erase some of it underneath. Okay, so the um, depending on which direction you're going to have the eye look, I like to draw the pupil first. So if it's looking straight out at you, something like that. If you want the eye to be looking sideways, you can bring the pupil over here. You could have it look down by bringing the pupil here, etc. This one I'm just going to have looking straight at me. So that's a pretty good size for the pupil, the black part. And then the iris, it's kind of like a donut that goes around the donut hole. So about the proportions, the thickness of a donut, something like that. Once you have that, then you're going to close the lid as much as you want over the iris. So you're making it blink. This one, the bottom one, generally comes up less than this closes. And just kind of come up and follow this curve here. Okay, once you have that, then you can go ahead and color in the iris. Sorry, the pupil, nice and dark. Down in circles. And then I can erase out here. Not going to do any shading yet. All I'm going to do, and that's like the crease when it opens, is I'm just going to get the lines correct. I can shade later. Erasing here. And then get the other one. Now I need to draw the nose in the face. If you notice here, one side of the nose is in shadow, the other one doesn't really even show up. In a photograph of people, we try to light one side of the nose and have a shadow on the other so that the nose shows up. Otherwise, if it's lit from both sides, the nose kind of disappears and make it flat. Here's another sample. So you notice this nose is darker on this side, lighter on that. You could even go completely uh, blank on this side and you still will have that look of a nose. Don't put a harsh line here. You want to just do a very light line and then the shading that ends up looking better. I create a smile down here as opposed to a frown. And I come over here a little ways up. If you can see, I'm going to draw a little darker than I want you to. I'm darker than so you can see with the camera. I come a little ways up that, about halfway from the bottom line and I create a frown right there. About halfway up, create a frown. This is going to be the nostril in here. Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to come out from it, go up and around, and then into this line. Start out here, come around it, try to get about the same spacing between here and here and here and here. Okay, so I'm going to be shading in this side of the nose and getting rid of this side of the nose. At least most of it. I can leave a hint there. So if you would like to create a little bit of shading here, you could, just to get it started. Notice this line ends up matching up with your eyebrow up here. You can run your finger from here along and all the way up, and there's a bone cartilage here. It goes into bone here. That makes that curve complete. Now I'm going to come here and I'm just going to do a tiny little shading, not a big circle, because you're seeing the circle of the nostril from the side. And I can do a little bit of erasing here and I can put these little lines for the little dip under your nose right there. So once I shade the nose in, it's going to pop out something like that or that. And I've got this little dip right here. Notice the nostrils are not circles. 
and this comes out to the side of them. Eventually we'll be shading in this a little bit to give yourself a little bit of volume. So now I have to create the lips. What I'm going to do is start down here and draw wide and then curve up a little bit. And then I'm going to create that little middle line. You can see the shape of that and then the top line. Here's a more masculine version, but pretty much the same thing. So I'm starting on this line right here. Coming over. Oh, by the way, the width of the nose and width of the mouth. So width of the nose is right here below the inside corner of the eye. I should have done this earlier. About there. Width of the mouth is under the pupil if the eye is looking straight ahead. So I want you to go ahead and draw these little lines to make you get that extra accurate. Okay, so I'm coming wide here, almost straight on that line, and then I'm curving up a little bit for the bottom lip. This is not the line between the lips. This is the line under the bottom lip. It's that one right down there. Now I'm going to go ahead right up here and I'm going to create a smile. This is the top of the bottom lip. And then I'm going to have it come down here and curve over to that. Different people have different shaped lips. This is only the bottom lip. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mimic this. So I'm doing a smile. Try to get it even. I see that these lines are off a little. So it's a similar shape to this. It's just bigger, wider. And create that top lip. If you want to give it a little fatter lip, you can curve this up a little bit. Something like that. If you want it to smile, just basically come to the edges and make it smile in here. In this particular one, we're not going to do an open mouth or anything. We're just creating some closed lips. Now, the shading on this is really important. Shading here, you can see it's dark between the lips and then it gradually gets lighter. Dark under the lip where you've got a shadow gradually gets lighter. So I can start here, and this would be easier if I could turn the paper upside down. So I'm pressing hard and light, hard and light, hard and light. Almost like an airplane with its wheels on the runway and then taking off. Hard and light, hard and light. So it gives you that gradual shading. I'm going off a little higher right here, and then I do the reverse. Hard and light. I don't want it to look like a mustache, so I don't want to do big, harsh lines here. I don't want the spaces to be really far apart either. Let's kind of work them together. And you can blend a little bit. And then I'm kind of doing the same thing up here. Hard and light. Just a little light shading here. A little bit of blending. Okay, now this person needs some eyebrows. Samples right there. Another sample here. So these are tighter. Like they have thicker eyebrows. And this one's a bit looser. More natural. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to kind of scrabble a line in there. I don't want to do lines like this. That's not going to look realistic at all. Our eyebrows are much messier than you would think like that. Or I can just take the pencil and kind of go like this and kind of scribble a line in and that'll work as well. Okay, I also need to show you how to get the eyelashes here. 
Again, they are more uneven than you would think, especially those bottom ones. I'm going to get really close up and focus. Some of the bottom lashes are just little dots and some are little squiggles, whereas the top ones are a little more even, but they are not perfect. So the eyelashes are going to start smaller here. They're going to grow bigger in the middle, kind of scribbly lines. Generally speaking, they're kind of curving out this direction, going like that. And then trying to get these somewhat even. Shorter here, longer here. Curving out and up. Something like that. Bottom lashes are actually coming from this line right here. Not the one that touches the eyeball, the one a little apart from it. And just kind of squiggly, some shorter, some longer. Piece them in there. And they don't go all the way into the tear duct. They start down here. That'll work for a lot of my lashes. I like those ones better. So it's going to look about like this. That is not quite round. You have to keep that outside of that iris really, really round or it's going to look odd. Okay, so creating a dark little edge. Notice all those pencil marks are heading in towards the pupil. So they're coming in these directions. Okay, and I'm going to go lighter and curve. And Heather, again, get dark to light, dark to light, aiming at the pupil. Remember, leave this part white. You can give a little bit more darkness here, create a shadow for the top lid and the bottom lid. That got filled in a little too much. Something like that. Okay, we have different options for hair. You can put any type you want on there. So longer hair that kind of comes in front of the face, short stubbly hair. You could even do a mohawk. You could do curly hair. There's more curly. There's a couple different options. Okay, now it's time for ears. So, believe it or not, ears, the top of them goes to the top of the eyebrows. Bottom of them comes all the way down to the bottom of your nose, way down here. So please draw lines like that and that. I'm going to actually start it down here under that line, pop it up a little bit, and curve it down. Start here, so I started below that line, now I start above this line. Notice how tight to the head the bottom of the ear is and how much further away the top is. So if you look at this left ear here, that's what it's going to end up looking like. To the other side, start down at the bottom. Here. Much closer here than here. Like that. And then it looks a little more accurate if you get the little dip in there. And then right about here you have the actual hole that goes in. Something like that. I'm going to have you use charcoal, which is basically a burnt stick to do the hair. So that as shown on here, I can create the lines and then I can smear them. So if I want to do hair, it's going to come down over the face. Let's say it goes behind the ear so you can still see that ear. Maybe it goes back here like that. Uh, I can also give her a neck right about here so, and then shoulder. So her hair maybe goes behind her shoulder. Actually, it was a little too narrow.
Okay, I need to give her some volume to the hair up at the top of the head. Let me move my camera. Volume. She's got nice thick hair. And then I can do some wavy lines. That one goes behind her ear. Notice, I am not drawing in every single line of hair. If you draw all the lines there, you try to draw all the lines, it's going to end up actually looking like she has less hair, not more. The edge of her head, there's her ear. She's got more hair going down here. A few more. And some of them are going to be closer, some of them are going to be farther away. Okay, and then I can take my finger and I can smear in the direction that the hair is growing and create that shading. That'll give some nice volume with that ear still showing. If I want to create stubbly hair like this, um, a young boy maybe's hairline is going to be down here and maybe come up to about here. So I can draw in that hairline and then I'm just going to kind of make little short peaks in the direction that the hair would actually grow. Some thinner, some thicker. Maybe I can give a little bit of sideburns. And I can smear it a little. And then I like to give it a little more depth and detail by going back and doing some thinner lines on top. Again, I am not trying to draw in every hair. That doesn't work and it ends up looking really thin, kind of balding. So that looks like hair right there. If I want to change the chin line here, I could kind of give it a dip, come out wider, more angular. Neck a little bit wider here. shoulder, maybe Adam's apple, and then a thinner lip for the male face. So a bit more masculine, a bit more feminine. If you want to do a mo mohawk, basically again you create the hairline, the younger hairline would be down there. You just make it kind of swoosh up. So the top of the mohawk would go back in this direction. Smear in the direction of the hair. And if you want, you can put a few more lines back in there so you can see it. This right here is kind of simulating almost like hair that goes up to a ponytail up top. So that's going like that and you can see the short and then curly is just doing little circles like this kind of thing little spirals smear it in a spiral and then again you can do some more dark areas there so it shows up if you want to do a more masculine face showing you how to shade that face so again, I am going to go ahead and use my charcoal because I think it's pretty quick, but you have to have a really light touch. So I'm going to curve this nose a little bit more. It was pretty straight before. And I give it a little bit of shading under here. Smear. If you have some charcoal on your finger, you can actually just smear with that as well. A little bit of shading under here. Notice I'm not going really dark with that. Little shading here on a curve. Smudge right here. Okay, I want to give a little definition to the cheek. Side of the face. 
So you can see, especially on this side, because remember the light is going here. You're seeing a little bit of shadow over here on the edge of the face. Wiped out my ear. I'll put that back in again. Finishing under the chin again, where you create a shadow. 